ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு லா எக்ஸலன்ஸ் இன் அவர் ரீகேப் ப்ரோக்ராம் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் மந்த்லி கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் வீடியோஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஜூலை டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் ரிலேட்டட் வீடியோ இன் திஸ் பார்ட் டூ வி வில் கம்ப்ளீட் த ரிமைனிங் டாபிக்ஸ் பிடிஎஃப் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ இஸ் அவைலபிள் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு ரைட் டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் தி மந்த்லி கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் வீடியோஸ் யூ கேன் என்ரோல் த்ரூ த லிங்க் கிவன் பிலோ லெட் அஸ் குவிக்லி ரிவைஸ் தி இஷ்யூஸ் லெட் அஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் எக்கானமி ரிலேட்டட் இஷ்யூஸ் First one is IBC haircut. Insolvency bankruptcy who deals with NPAs. Let's say a creditor has given a loan amounting 100 crores to a particular person or let's say to a corporation. And this went into NPA. This loan went into NPA. This person and his assets, his company's assets are worth let's say 80 crore only. That means this loan is 100 crore and the asset is 80 crore. So, the haircut for this particular bank or financial creditor is 20 crore so haircut is the amount that is total claims minus the amount of realization so in terms of ibc ibc sufficiency will be tested depending upon the haircut that it is taken by the operational as well as the financial creditors it's been 5 years since the enactment of ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code these are the salient features nclt is the nodal agency to deal with the insolvency and bankruptcy cases these are some of the salient features of ibc just go through it once with regard to ibc there's one more issue that is the news that is the guarantors personal guarantors they are also liable in case of ibc that means when a company goes under goes bankrupt the personal guarantors while taking the loan for this company will also be made responsible and accountable for the loan taken under ibc and this was contested in supreme court supreme court said it is fair to have the accountability because these are giving the guarantee that is why under ibc these are also liable that was the recent judgment that's why it's news next issue is stock limit on pulses recently under essential commodities act stock limits were imposed stock limits are imposed one to control the inflation two to regulate to prevent the hoarding to prevent the hoarding and to check the inflation stock limits are imposed recently pulses and their prices started increasing that is inflation that is why government has imposed stock limits please remember under essential commodities act stock limits are not applicable to food corporation of india which plays an important role in implementation of pds next issue is crane india case with regard to crane india case permanent court of arbitration in the year 2020 december has mentioned that india has violated bilateral investment treaty between india and uk and this international court of arbitration has imposed this tax liability on india to pay to crane india in this regard recently government has passed taxation amendment law under this particular law retrospective taxation and its negative impacts are reversed crane india vodafone and whoever is affected due to re- these retrospective laws they will be compensated if they t- if they take back all the cases that have filed in all the jurisdictions next issue is agricultural infrastructure fund recently union cabinet has restructured this part- particular fund initially it was for 7 years now it is extended to 13 years up to 2032 to 33 this is this uh, funding this is the agricultural fund that will be given to fpos ssgs pcac pacs startups and agri enterprises for setting up farm infrastructure up other than farm farm processing activities other than from processing activities all other activities will be provided with the debt here till 2 crores of loan 3% per annum with 3% per annum interest rate loan will be provided and loan moratorium is also there for certain period this agri infrastructure fund scheme this will be implemented under ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare next issue is national infrastructure pipeline nip recently with regard to national monetization pipeline it was said that this nmp is going to revitalize national infrastructure pipeline what is nip nip is an infrastructural project which is funded combinedly by the central government state government and private sector and this is one of its kind of initiative this will help india to achieve 5 trillion dollar economy 
There's a committee called Atnu Chakrabarti Committee. This committee has recommended on the implementation strategy of NP NIP National Infrastructure Pipeline. And these are the areas that are selected as the core areas for investment. Next issue is storage payment system data recently MasterCard. It was barred from issuing new credit cards and debit cards for next few next six months. It is because it has failed to comply with the store data localization and data data storage norms of RBI. According to RBI's 2018 notification, these companies they have to store the payment related data in India only, but they have not done it. That is why RBI has imposed or bar the MasterCard for a certain period of time. This is not the first one. There are other country, other companies such as American Express, Diners Club International. These cards were also barred for a few months because of lack of compliance with these rules. Next issue is stock market bubble. Recently, it is observed that the growth rates in India and the stock prices in India both have shown the divergence. That means in spite of very less growth, stock rates were very high. That is known as stock bubble. That means it's a temporary high. In general, the general trend should be this way. If the growth is more, stock prices would increase. But it is reverse. So that is why it is called bubble because it is going to be uh, going to be short term. Next issue is amendment to Deposit Insurance Act. Recently, Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation Bill was introduced and it was passed. Last year, the deposit and credit guarantee insurance was raised from 1 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees. This recent amendment has changed the time limit. Now the time limit is 90 days within which this deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation will give the money back to the depositor. 5 lakh rupees is the maximum amount. Next issue is K-shaped recovery. In case of downfall in the economic growth, especially let's say recession, Economies tend to rise after some period. In such case, if few industries and few sectors rise and few others fall down, such a situation is known as K-shaped recovery. That means only few industries they recover, others they fall down. Such incidents are known as K-shaped recovery. It is again as the U-shaped and V-shaped recovery. Next issue is crowding out effect. Crowding out means sending someone outside. So in case of huge government borrowing, private sector won't have money in the market to borrow. Such situation is known as crowding out effect. So crowding out effect is one of the results of easy fiscal policy or expansionary fiscal policy. So in case of fiscal stimulus, government has to borrow more, spend more. That can lead to less money supply for the private sector to borrow, which will impact its investment plans. This is known as crowding out effect. This expansionary fiscal policy that the governments are following is again as the principles of Washington consensus. Washington consensus promotes 10 major principles out of them fiscal discipline is one. And that is why they said that we are saying goodbye to Washington consensus because of the recent incidents especially protectionist tendencies from major economies, fiscal expansionary policies, tax reforms etc. Next issue is submission on agricultural mechanization. Recently, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare it has launched submission on agricultural mechanization. That's in 2014 and 15. Recently, this was in news because Ministry of Agriculture has given an explanation in the parliament saying that custom hiring centers under this particular submission on agricultural mechanization are being established in almost all the rural important rural centers. What are these custom hiring centers? Custom hiring centers and high-tech hubs of high-value machines, they are to offset the loss due to lack of mechanization. Mechanization increases the efficiency and productivity. These things, they will be hired by the farmer whenever is, it is necessary. That way, farmer need not buy the machine. He can rent it on, on time. He can get it on rent on time. Next issue is 6 years of implementation of Digital India Mission. We have to read this in depth for our mains examination but for now for our prelims exam point of view we have to just know what are the nine pillars of digital india mission e kranti is one of the important pillars this is part of e governance plan earlier we used to call it as national e governance plan now it is renamed as e kranti which is part of digital india mission all other components all these nine together they promote digital india 
and digital divides need to be addressed by strengthening all these nine pillars. Next issue is Freight Smart Cities Mission. Freight means transportation of goods. Goods transportation in urban areas, especially on a bulk scale, it leads to traffic and congestion. If we plan that, and if, if the freight movement is planned, such cities are known as Freight Smart Cities Mission. Recently, it was launched. Next, let us discuss SMT related issues. First one is plasmid DNA vaccine. Recently, Zyko D became the first world's first plasmid DNA vaccine. What do we mean by plasmid DNA? We attach the antigen gene to the plasmid, the bacterial DNA, and we, we send it to the host cell. This cell produces the antigen. This antigen will be extracted and given as vaccine. This vaccine, this type of vaccine he knows as plasmid DNA vaccine. Types of vaccines are very, very important. Please read them carefully. And one of the specialities of Jaiko D is it can be administered to the children and adults, to our children and the adults about 12 years of age. Zyko D, it doesn't require any needle. Next issue is OneWeb Satellite Internet. OneWeb is a company. This is launching satellites into lower orbit. From lower orbit, it is planning to provide the internet connectivity so that it can reach to remotest of the areas at a very low cost. It is planning to launch constellation of satellites in the LEO, low earth orbit. Similarly, we have one more project that is known as Starlink project. This project is planning to launch thousands of satellites in the lower orbit to provide a mesh kind of uh, mesh kind around the earth. But this, it is said that this can lead to huge scale of space junk and it can be source of light pollution. Next issue is neutrino star and gravitational waves. Recently, it was observed by LIGO scientific collaborations that merger of black hole and neutron star has led to formation of uh, gravitational waves. What are these gravitational waves? These are the ripples in this space that form when a star explodes in supernova. Two big stars meet, two black holes merge or neutron star and black hole merge. In all these cases, the result is formation, uh, um, the formation of gravitational waves. They travel at the speed of the light and they squeeze and stretch anything in their path, gravitational waves. To study them, we have certain labs known as LIGO labs. In India also, we are building LIGO India project to observe the gravitational waves. It is being built in Maharashtra. Let's briefly understand a black hole. Black hole is a, is a structure which has infinite gravity. These are formed after the death of the star. Neutron stars are uh, stars which are at the edge of their lifetime. The stars at the edge of their lifetime leads to formation of neutron stars. Next issue is pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. This vaccine was made part of the immunization program in Andhra Pradesh. That's why it was in use. This pneumococcal conjugate vaccine known as Nimosil was, was developed indigenously by Serum Institute of India. And pneumococcal disease is a respiratory disease caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria. And we have a universal immunization program which was launched in 1985. It has 12, vaccine 12 vaccines that are administered to the pregnant women and the young children. Out of them, pneumonia vaccine is also there. Next issue is non-communicable neurological diseases. Neurological diseases are of two types. One, communicable. Two, non-communicable. Neurological diseases cause damage to the central and peripheral nervous system. Non-communicable neurological disorders are increasing. That's, wh that's what is in use. Stroke, headache, cerebral palsy, Alzheimer's, Parkinson disease. These are some of the non-communicable diseases that are in use. This is because of changing lifestyle and changing food patterns at stress levels etc these are the primary reasons for increase in the non-communicable neurological disorders next issue is zero survey and related issues zero survey means we take the blood samples we can we conduct the study on the serum serum part of blood and we study we search for the antibodies if antibodies for a particular disease is present that means we might have been infected earlier or we, we are infected with the disease. Serological survey is not a conclusive study. Serological test is not a conclusive test. But it tells us about the infection rates. The recent serological survey has shown that 59% of Indian population have antibodies against COV2. 
as we said we have two types of test one is conclusive test as of now rt pcr is used as conclusive test second one is antibody test serological tests these are to decide the spread of the disease not decide not to confirm the infection next issue is unity 22 mission virgin galactics virgin galactic company has launched unity 22 mission under this mission crew along with this uh, unity 22 ship they reached sub orbital sub orbital plane which is little less than karman line so that is why it is said that it's a sub orbital flight what do we mean by karman line from the earth surface 100 km line is known as a karman line when when we cross that line we call it's the entry into outer space as this virgin galactic reached till 80 plus kilometers we call it a sub orbital plane next issue is blue origin space mission blue origin blue origin is the company's name it has launched this mission where in using new shepherd new shepherd has one cabin that is crew module and one rocket this new you know, blue origin space mission it has crossed the karman line that means it has entered into outer space this is how it works this rocket it takes a, takes off vertically and then launches this this orbits and then this particular rocket lands vertically and then this crew module comes back 100 km line is known as karman line that is why blue origin company has achieved outer space mission so in this context these companies there's one more company known as spacex blue origin all these companies they are trying for gathering the space tourism market next issue is deep fake technology deep fake technology is said to be one of the major threats in terms of spreading the fake news and fake issues it is the application of artificial intelligence and it can be done at very very less cost and it can have larger ramifications deep fake technology it converts it it, uh, it it has two components one is generator second one is discriminator we call them as encoder and decoder encoder and decoder they change the characteristics which cannot be easily detected it uses artificial intelligence to do this next issue is gold nanoparticle based detection method nano particles they display different characteristics at the nano scale as compared to the larger scale for example if we take gold its lower temperature melting temperature is around 300 degrees as compared to bulk gold which is at 1064 degrees so these are used for gold nano particles are used for therapeutic imaging cancer treatment that is to carry the potential drug to treat the cancer cells and it is also used for diagnosis gold nanoparticle based detection method has many applications next issue is anti microbial resistance microbes such as bacteria virus fungus they get the resistance uh, over a period of time if we do these things let's say if we have antibiotics prescribed but we don't use them regularly or we use them on a overdose then that bacteria might get the resistance resistance means in general in nature there are certain resistant bacteria that impacts other bacteria to become resistant and there are these are some of the major causes for antibiotic resistance these are over prescribing of antibiotics patients not finishing their treatment on time and over use of antibiotics in the animals poor hospital conditions lack of hygiene lack of new antibiotics and lack of research in them these are some of the causes for increase in the antimicrobial resistance in this context our ministry of health and family welfare it has identified antimicrobial resistance as one of the top 10 health threats similarly who has done it and india has launched national action plan on antimicrobial resistance according to chennai declaration chennai declaration on antimicrobial resistance has says that at three levels on a short medium and long term we have to make this strategy so according to that government has proposed national action plan on amr next issue is zika virus recently zika virus cases were reported for the first time in kerala zika is a mosquito borne flavi virus uh, disease and this viral disease this is mosquito borne disease and this zika virus which is caused by aedes aegypti this this mosquito also causes transmits dengue chikungunya and yellow fever 
Let us briefly look at the symptoms of Zika virus. Zika, it leads to conjunctivitis, rashes, joint pains, fever, headache, muscle pain, etc. As Zika and chikungunya has similar symptoms, that's why the diagnosis is done. When case of a wrong diagnosis, it can lead to fatality. Zika can affect the pregnant women in case if the pregnant woman is affected by the Zika virus, it shows the direct impact on the child. It can lead to microcephaly. And Zika virus can be transmitted through blood transfusion, sexual transmission, etc. Next issue is first hydrogen mobility mission. Recently, NTPC has set up first hydrogen mobility mission project in Ladakh. So what is this uh, hydrogen mobility mission project? Hydrogen is a cleaner fuel. We obtain hydrogen from the electrolysis process. And when we use green sources of energy, for electrolysis that is let's say if we use solar energy or wind energy for the electrolysis from which hydrogen is obtained we call that hydrogen as green hydrogen green hydrogen is useful in various industries such as chemical industry shipping industry fertilizer industry etc and this will reduce global warming promotes renewable energy in india next let us understand governance related aspects first one is bharat net viability gap funding Recently, Union Cabinet has approved for Bharatnet Viability Gap Funding of 19,000 crores. So, what is this Viability Gap Funding? Let us briefly understand. Viability Gap Funding is given in case if uh, to avoid or to defer the losses to the infrastructural projects. Bharatnet project was initially launched as National Optical Fiber Cable Network and it was renamed as Bharatnet in the year 2015. This, this is implemented by Bharat Broadband Network Limited. It is a special purpose vehicle incorporated under Companies Act. And this Bharatnet project, it is funded using the Universal Service Obligation Fund, USOF. This is the funding agency. This provides internet high speed, optical fiber cable internet to all the rural areas and gram panchayats. Next issue is Nipun Bharat. Ministry of Education has launched Nipun Bharat. National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading and Understanding and Numeracy. This is the initiative of Ministry of Education. This is to ensure that every child in the age group of age group below grade 3 will be provided with basic numeracy and literacy skills by 2026 and 27. There are four important features of this one foundation to develop the foundational skills to promote the activity based learning to promote the innovative pedagogies to promote the intensive capacity building of teachers these are four components of nipun bharat scheme this is funded under samagra shiksha abhiyan samagra shiksha abhiyan under this this nipun bharat is funded there are no separate funding for this next issue is ministry of cooperation Recently, Ministry of Cooperation was created by the central government under the theme of Sahakar Se Samriddhi. This cooperation movement in India is older. It was there before independence. It, it is there even after independence. After independence and planning, cooperatives have become a major part. And National Cooperative Development Corporation was established. Multi-State Cooperative Act was brought in. Government announced National Policy on Cooperatives. These are some of the... Measures that we have taken after independence, there are constitutional provisions now. Cooperatives have become constitutional bodies after 97th Constitutional Amendment Act. The word cooperatives were added to Article 191C under Constitution and Article 43B to the DPSP was added for the promotion of cooperative societies. Next issue is Personal Data Protection Bill. Personal Data Protection, draft Personal Data Protection Bill was suggested by B and Sri Krishna committee, it provides safeguards for the consumers. Government will have better regulatory role. Social media companies are regulated. In case of any breach, they will be punished. So according to this bill, Data Protection Authority of India as a regulator, in regulatory independent body would be made responsible for the enforcement of these provisions. This bill was not at passed. This bill is still pending in the parliament. Next issue is Draft Drone Rules 2021. Recently, Ministry of Civil Aviation has, has launched Draft Drone Rules 2021. According to them, multiple approvals that were necessary earlier was reduced and fees for registration was made nominal. 
Drone corridors would be set up for promotion of indigenous manufacturing. No pilot license is required for micro drones. No flight permission is required up to 400 feet. Digital sky platform is made mandatory for the registration. Next is India Inequality Report 2021. Oxfam India has published India Inequality Report 2021. According to this, women literacy have improved. But overall inequalities, especially with regard to COVID-19, they have increased. Next is Matsya Setu app. Recently, Ministry of Fisheries has launched an app for the online courses with regard to fisheries sector. And this is known as Matsya Setu app. This is developed in cooperation with ICAR and National Fisheries Development Board. Matsya Setu app provides online co mobile course. Next issue is Wumang app. Recently, Wumang app has enabled mapping services also. Wumang means Unified Mobile Application for New Age Governance. This is a comprehensive app which covers all other government apps. And recently, this new feature of showing the location of the nearby, let's say shops, hospitals, etc. that was added recently. Wumang is a mobile app. This was launched to, for the fast track mobile governance in India. It enables the ease of living in India. Next is Gatekeeper Model. National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences has issued guidelines for the mental health issues of prisoners and prison staff. Under this, Gatekeeper Model was proposed. That means a nodal agency and the person will understand, will talk to the person who is in distress. So they act as gatekeepers. Next issue is District Mineral Foundation. Recently, funds under District Mineral Foundation or uh, rights on them are removed for these states. Why? It is said that states are using the funds under District Mineral Foundation for other purposes. The original purpose under Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Act of this DMF is to fund the areas and develop the areas in the mining areas. That is, it is to share the benefits and develop mutually. As the states are diverting them, center said, you don't have the control anymore. We will have the control on it. Next issue is PM Kusum scheme. Recently, sensitization programs on implementation of PM Kusum was launched. That is why it's the news. PM Kusum promotes for use of solar pump sets. When solar pump sets are used, farmer can be both producer and consumer. Electricity can be consumed whenever necessary. Electricity can be produced and when it is connected to the grid, it generates the income to the farmer. Next issue is Commission for Air Quality Management in the National Capital Region and Adjoining Areas Bill. Recently, this was passed. According to this particular bill, NCR region and adjoining areas with regard to pollution management will come under this particular region. Why a separate commission is required? NCR region is experiencing very high levels of pollution due to stubble burning, vehicular traffic, etc. That is why separate commission is appointed through the Parliamentary Act. So, in case of any appeals against the commission's order, they go to National Green Tribunal. Next, let us discuss environment and disaster management related aspects. First one is wildfires in the Arctic region. In the Arctic region, due to the increase in the temperatures, forest fires are increasing, especially in the Siberian region, southwest region of uh, Alaska, Kyokweta of Greenland. All these areas are experiencing wildfires. It is primarily due to the Arctic amplification. What do we mean by Arctic amplification? Temperature rise in the Arctic region is more as compared to other areas. Such phenomena is known as Arctic amplification, this is the result of global warming and climate change. When forest fires happen in the Arctic and Antarctic region, sometimes they spread beneath the ground. They are known as zombie fires. And in this case, it, it leads to melting of permafrost. This melting of permafrost releases more greenhouse gases such as methane into the atmosphere. Wildfires in the Arctic region are very dangerous. Next issue is landslides in Himalayas. Himalayan region is more vulnerable. Recently in Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, there are many landslides. The Himalayan region is formed due to the convergence boundary. And this is fragile region which is seismically active. That is why any, any type of developmental projects such as uh, large hydro projects, mountain cutting for infrastructural projects. So these things, they make the geography much more vulnerable. 
Recently, it is said that the Chamoli disaster in Uttarakhand, all these are result of the faulty developmental priorities. So, landslides in Himalayas can be avoided by proper developmental strategies. Next issue is China's carbon trading scheme. Carbon trading means every country will have bud carbon budget. Every company, every individual like that. Everyone has their own limits to emit the carbon. Carbon in, ca in this case, greenhouse gases. So let's say if a company emits less than what it needs to, it can sell that as a, it can sell that limit as a carbon credit. So others who are unable to limit their carbon emissions, they can buy them. They can buy these carbon credits. Such trading is known as carbon trading. Such markets are known as carbon markets. China has started carbon trading scheme recently. It has replaced European Union, Union as one of the world's largest trading, uh, carbon emission traders. Next issue is Californian forest fires. Every year Californian forest fires are common but this year Due to heat dome, heat wave and high temperatures, California region has experienced large scale forest fires. So nearby this, nearby this region, California, we have cold current known as Californian current that also make that region dry. And this high pressure, this all things led to huge scale forest fires. Next issue is microplastics in Ganga River. Recently, it was reported that microplastics of varied sizes are reported in the waters of Ganga. What are these microplastics and what are the harms of this? Microplastics, they are of a very, very small size and they pollute. They are released due to synthetic textiles, car tires, city dust, road markings, etc. These microplastics, when they accumulate either on land or water, they enter into the Human, they enter into the organisms, especially when they are accumulated in the water, that enters into the bio chain, bio food chain, which is known as bio magnification and bio accumulation, which is harmful to humans as well as the marine biodiversity. Microplastics is a dangerous thing. Next issue is green hydrogen mobility project. In our governance, we have discussed about the same thing. So in Ladakh, we launched a green hydrogen mobility project. That means we use solar or wind, whatever renewable energy for the electrolysis through which we produce the hydrogen. Such production of hydrogen is known as green hydrogen. And this is environment friendly. That is why recently it was launched on a pilot basis. This hydrogen fuel was used for transportation sector in the Ladakh. Next issue is new initiatives on renewable energy. Recently, Ministry Minister of State for New and Renewable Energy has released a booklet known as The India Story on Energy Efficiency Measures of India. Let us understand them briefly. Electrification. For electrification, we have Pradhana Mantri Sahaj Bizli Hargar Yojana, that is Saubhagya. We have Green Energy Corridor, National Smart Grid Mission and National Smart Meter National Program. For to develop the renewable energy, we have National Solar Mission, Wind Energy Revolution, National Biofuel Policy, Small Hydropower Projects, National Hydrogen Energy Mission and National Biofuel Policy. Similarly, to promote the energy efficiency directly, we have Ujala, Ujala Scheme for Affordable LEDs. For Clean Cooking, we have Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. For Industrial Decarbonization, we have PAT Platform. Perform Achieve and Trade Platform. For Sustainable Development, we have FA, FAME Scheme. Indian Railways are going green. And Sustainable Aviation, these are some of them. Next comes Climate Smart Cities. For that, we have Smart Cities Mission. Green Buildings Market. For City Gas Distribution, we have CNG, PNG Network. For Cooling Action, we have India Cooling Action Plan. For Skilling, we have Skill Council for Green Jobs. For globe, as per the global initiatives, we have International Solar Alliance, Clean Energy Ministerial and Mission Innovation. These are some of the measures to promote energy efficiency and sustainable energy production in India. Next issue is Earth Overshoot Day. Recently, World Wide Fund for Nature has uh, said that uh, on 29th July, we have overshot. That means all the plant resources which we we need to use on us for sustainable for sustainable development were already used whatever we use after 29th july july these are overuse till 29th july whatever we have to consume over a one p one year period we have already consumed that means we, have, we are overshooting next issue is genome sequencing of salt secreting mangrove species what is this mangroves they can tolerate the salt 
that is why if we can decode the gene which helps in this toleration we if we can introduce it in the other crops they can withstand the high saline soils so that will help in the saline agriculture of the saline areas that's why this research was conducted recently mangrove species are known as halophytes these are helpful and these are one of the most productive ecosystems they help to provide wood livelihood protection coastal protection they also help in water filtration they help in tourism sector there are many advantages due to mangrove species in india sundarbans they they are house for large scale mangroves not just in india in the entire world next let us discuss ir related issues first one is opec plus opec organization of petroleum export countries opec is a cartel that decides these countries together they decide the supply supply of uh, oil and they decrease and increase to change the prices of oil because when the oil price oil supply is reduced or increase the prices vary that is why and now they for along with other non opec member countries they formed a group known as opec plus they are deciding recently they have decide to reduce the supply that has led to increase in the crude oil prices in the market opec plus these are the opec members these are the additional members which together are called as opec plus next issue is oic recently organization of islamic cooperation has proposed that it would act as a mediator between india and pakistan but india rejected it what is this oic it is the second largest inter intergovernmental organization after united nations it's a collective voice of muslim world india has second largest muslim population in the world but we are not a member pakistan is continuously rejecting for india to join as a member in oic next issue is infrastructural projects of india in afghanistan india has contributed to salma building salma dam zarans dalram national highway parliament building and there are many developmental projects on which we invested now talibans have taken control over afghanistan we have to see what would be the fate of the ongoing projects and how the relationship would figure out next issue is india nepal border issue there are two areas in which india and nepal have the border disputes one is kalapani area two is susta area what is the dispute with regard to kalapani we have a river known as kali under sugali treaty it was said that towards the east of kali the the bound the entire land belongs to nepal towards the west it's india's now nepal says that there's a place called limpudarya from that place there's a tributary of kali that flows that means kali means kali tributary also that's why they claim this entire area is theirs we claim that as ours and this is strategically important because of lipu lake mountain pass this kalap entire kalapani area is high altitude area which is important strategically for india next disputed region is susta because of the change in gandak river this region came to this side earlier this was on that side of nepal now it came this side that is why this is in controversy next issue is brexit deal brexit means britain that is uk coming out of european union it has already come out earlier they had strong relationship in terms of economy trade now what what should be the relationship to deal with that they have signed a trade deal brexit trade deal here we have to know about one thing that is known as good friday agreement that means so this is ireland this is northern ireland this is republic of ireland they have an agreement known as good friday agreement according to this the boundary and people movement between the two should be free good friday agreement but how uk would allow that when it came out of european union because this is part of european union this is not part of european union how would it allow that has become the controversial issue but what is the agreement's name good friday agreement good friday agreement is between northern ireland and republic of ireland next issue is south china sea dispute china claims this entire region within this nine dash line as its own territory but other countries like vietnam malaysia philippines they say that they also have the claims prasal islands patli islands kalbau shoal these are some of the controversial regions in south china sea region south china sea dispute is in news many a times just go through this once and go through what is the judgment of unclos with regard to south china sea dispute next issue is africa's open deal open deal means data for environment 
environment agriculture and land this is simply a database consisting of all the african union members this is prepared it's jointly prepared by food and agricultural organization and african union commission it is this maps the entire green cover within the african continent according to the 7 billion trees are outside the forest and this is the first time we have such huge environmental data on africa Next, let us discuss security related issues. First one is Pegasus. Pegasus is a malware spyware which was in use which is developed by Israel's private defense software company known as NSO. Recently, this Pegasus project is an international investigative journalism project under which it is said that almost 300 people from India, they were spied using this Pegasus. So we don't have clear evidence as of now, but in this case Pegasus, Pegasus the name, this is derived from Greek, Greek mythology. It's a constellation in the northern sky. Pegasus is a zero-click software. That means without we clicking on any link, it directly installs in our phone or computer. It takes control of, of our system. It sends all the data to the database without our knowledge. That means it, uh, it spies on us without our knowledge. These are some of the points with regard to Pegasus. Please go through it once. These are few more points. Next issue is Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Recently, Delhi High Court has granted bail to some of these students, student activists with regard to arrest under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. And it has said that conviction rates under UAPA are very less. So the police should be careful in arresting the people because UAPA is used as a tool which can be used to arrest the people without any bail. But misuse should not be there, that is the issue. But UAPA is necessary. It is to curb the terror and terrorism activities. Next issue is Golden Crescent and Golden Triangle. These are news because of recent drug abuse cases. Golden Crescent and Golden Triangle are the opium producing and distribution areas. Golden Crescent consists of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran. Golden Triangle consists of Myanmar, Thailand, Laos and Vietnam. India is in between these two. That means India acts as a transit. That is why border regions in India, they are more prone to drug abuse. Next issue is Defense Industrial Corridor. In the year 2018, in 2018, the government has announced two defense industrial corridor to promote defense manufacturing in India. One in Tamil Nadu, other one in Uttar Pradesh. These are to promote the indigenous production. These are to promote the exports and they generate the employment. They also promote the private sector participation in the domestic manufacturing of defense components. A final issue is exercise Indra. Indra is joint Navy exercise between India and Russia. Now it has been upgraded to upgraded, upgraded as a trilateral tri-service exercise since 2017. These are some of the other military exercises. Just go through this once. This is about July 2021 related issues. Thank you very much. All the very best.